and these kind of film festivals will actually give a glimpse of the culture and Spanish culture, I mean I'm a big fan of Spanish cinema and uh, their films and their culture are like as rich and as like, like old cultures and they have a rich variety of food and culture and uh, so it's, it's a joy to watch it and it's a pleasure to be here, thank you so much. Um, film festivals become important uh, because, uh, let's face it, cinema is dying. Going to theatres and watching movies is, uh, everybody expects it to go away in the next five years, six years, people have different timelines. Uh, but the theatrical culture is going to end uh, with the influx of Netflix and Amazon and all those uh, streaming sites. Uh, nothing against them, it's just a different uh, medium. Uh, so theatres will become the space only for spectacles, for these big movies, uh, the more intimate films which talk about uh, local people set in a local culture, set in a specific time would all move to TV which you can watch at home. So in that context, I think what ICAF is doing is very very important. Uh, cinema is the art form of the century. Uh, and to preserve that, it's now come to the point that uh, we have to preserve it. Uh, this medium is going through tremendous changes. We have to move the changes, but ICAF is needed to, uh, to ensure that uh, the golden times of cinema is still preserved. So I really, really appreciate uh, what uh, Indo Cine Appreciation Foundation has been doing for a very long time, very, very long time. And that is exposing us to films from all around the world. In fact, when we were in college, I think uh, our first exposure to international films came through uh, ICAF. And uh, that is still continuing. Uh, we still get to see uh, those unique films which you can't uh, read in a paper. You will have to Google it and find out what is that film about. So, I don't know how uh, he manages to do it. He keeps exposing us to these films every year. Uh, so. Thanks a lot, thanks a lot uh, Indo Cine Appreciation Foundation for uh, doing this. Uh, you guys are uh, the watchers on the wall preventing the invasion which will destroy cinema. So uh, this is a great uh, thing and uh, congratulations on the uh, Spanish Film Festival. Thank you Mr. Tandaraj. On behalf of the Institute of Sabates and the Consulate of Spain, in association with the Indo Cine Appreciation Foundation, I welcome you all to this uh, three day Spanish Film Festival. I must thank uh, Director uh, Mr. Jaika, Mrs. Gayatri, and uh, Mrs. Inma Kaluda, and my wife for making it possible to be here today as dis distinguished guests. At the outset, I would like to commend and congratulate the ICAF for the excellent job they have been doing over the years in getting films not only from Spain, from all over the world. Every month there's a festival. Last month I think there was a Mexican festival. And in my term of office, which was hardly a year, I've attended two Spanish festivals. This is the second one. And I'm sure in the future you'll see a lot more apart from Spanish films I'm thinking of working with the uh, Institute Cervantes, who's so not only films, but they are also the cultural center for Spanish in India. I'm trying to get them to open an office here, which will take some time. But until then, I can assure you, I do not know whether ICF will be interested in also doing cultural activities, apart from films. Because the next thing we should have is a lovely flamenco show <coughs> followed by Spanish wine, which they have every month in Delhi. So why can't we have it here? But let's, let's, let's move on initially, at least for the films. Today we are going to start off with three Spanish directors who are directing three films on women, not three films, two, four, six films if I'm right. Huh? The first one on women and we're, we're happy to have a director here, a lady. But I do not know whether we have a lot of uh, ladies directors in India or is there limited in South? It's limited in South, okay? To give you a small, a brief outline of the Spanish film industry, why we haven't heard much of it over the years is like this. I do not know if many of you all know that uh, Spanish was, uh, Spain was ruled by a dictator, Francisco Franco. 
right from 1939, he took over as dictator of Spain, right up to 1975. And when he was there, it was heavy censorship. Not only in the film industry, everything Mr. Spaniards do. It was mainly because of the war which happened. He didn't want any information to go out. So everything was censored. And, what, and whatever they produced or directed in Spain ended up in losses. So none of the Spanish uh, uh, directors wanted to enter into new films in Spain. So what they did was at least give up the locations in Spain to Hollywood movies. And that's what they did. They sold a lot of locations. Many of you all re might remember the movie for a few dollars more. And the good, bad and ugly. Do you know where it was all taken? It was mainly taken in Spain, a place called Almera, where, where there's only mountains and sand. It was a desert. It's, and today, if any of you all go to Almera, you can still see the sets of the movie. It's still there, and they still take movies there. It was not taken in the US. Parts of it were in the US, but most of it was taken in this way. And a lot of other American movies were taken. So after 75, when Spain opened up and became a democracy after King Juan Carlos came over, the whole Spanish industry opened. But it was a little too late to catch up with Hollywood. And even the French industry, they were going slow. But after 75, the industry started. And they started a lot of out-of-the-box movies, not the ones you see in Hollywood, action-packed and all that, because that was heavy investment. And uh, so, so the movies which I'm going to see today is also out-of-the-box. It will give you a different uh, style of thinking, the creativity of the movie, something you should, uh, I think, have a look at, because it's done by, by uh, female directors. So that's what you're going to see today. And uh, what else can I tell you on the film? So after that, and basically Spain, would run into a lot of serials because everybody works there. So when they come back, they want to look at serials. They don't have much time to go for a full movie like in India. The other part of it is I'm trying to get, you know, one of the big uh, Hindi movie was uh, taken in Spain recently, and none of the South Indian producers or directors started to Spain. But I'm getting a troop to go there. Uh, because people from Spain had come down and they are going to take a movie shortly because they are good locations and we are trying to tie up maybe in the next six months we will have a movie being taken in Spain and the locations. So if you are looking at something like that, because Spain is beautiful, yeah. it has got everything. Uh, so I think with that I like to close my little speech. Thank you Mr. Tangaraj, he has been the backbone of this and without his help I think he is arranging for the films, he is arranging for the audience. Arranging for us to come. I think he's done a wonderful job and a big applause must go to him. Thank you so much and I wish you all the best and let's enjoy the movies as we go along. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for nice compliments. Yes, sir, we are really a cultural partner, not only for film. Okay. If you have any other activities, kindly inform us. We will inform in turn our members, they would like to come and see that also. It's not a problem for us also. In fact, Cervantes, New Delhi, was kind enough to give contract details for various reviews in Latin American countries also, including Uruguay, he has given a contract, they are expecting the ambassador to come to Chennai. They all want to come to Chennai. So, you will have an inauguration like that also. This kind of things you are going to